guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be sharing some of my black colocasia care tips now i already have a video on colocasia black magics this video is more of an update so if you haven't seen that video i'm going to leave a link here so that you can watch that video watch that one first and then come back to this video if you watched that previous video you know that my beautiful black colocasia nile was brought inside for winter Unfortunately, due to my ongoing battle with mealybugs, she didn't make it. So I had to start again this year, and I've done something a little bit different. Have a look. Now, as you can see, it's actually in a container pond. Now, in my last video, I did say that they could be grown in a pond. And so that's what I did here. In fact, this same plant was the same plant that I used in my RHS Tatton Park border garden. And as you can see, it's thriving. Or, so you would think. But let's get a little bit of a closer look at the leaves. Now, that is a slug trail. And, you know, to the naked eye, it looks okay. But this is something that I want you to do with your black colocasia. Make sure that you get a closer look. If we look at all of these crevices in here, you will see that actually this poor plant is infested with spider mites now this is pretty normal for this plant it it's like a magnet for them but the plant is producing a brand new leaf so you know it is happy but what i want to do is give this guy a, a bit of a cleanse so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you my process of how i'm going to take care of it before we get into that, I really want to show you something that I think is really important. If you happen to see one of these guys at your local nursery and you want to get it, take a look at this. Now obviously we've got these big leaves, but as we look towards the bottom, there are loads of smaller leaves. In natural fact, there are several individual plants in this one pot. Now when you buy them, you might just find that there's one big plant in there. But I specifically chose this one because here we've got one, two, three, four, five. There's five individual plants to make up this one pot. So already I'm making a huge saving with this one plant. If I really wanted to, I could divide them up and have five separate plants. How cool is that? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it out of the pond and then I'm going to take it over to the table, uh, give it a good wipe down. But also I just want to see what the conditions are of the root and see whether or not it might need repotting. Let's go. Oh. I've got some rocks in there just to help balance it. Wow, look at these roots. <gasps> no way, this is the first time I've taken it out. Wow. Just look at the back of it, full. I didn't even see this. It's full of eggs. These look like they are aphid eggs. It's like a mixture of aphids and um, spider mites. We can see the slug trails. This is the newest leaf, but even then we can, we can see that it's starting to get the spider mites too. Now we can tell by the root system, it's, it's obviously very healthy. Look at this, all of that that you see there, those are all roots. Look at this, more slug trails. It's amazing how much we don't see in our garden until we get up close. And then underneath, look at all of that. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I've got my work cut out for me here. My spine in my video, I showed you how to make a homemade spray. So I'm gonna use this to get rid of some of those eggs and some of the spider mites on there. And then I'm gonna use a microfiber towel to wipe it all down. So let's get started. Now I'm doing this in the evening. So it won't burn in the sun. Well, I don't want to spray the spider. Can you can you come off please, love? Yep. Yep, move your butt. Get off. There we go. We put her there with the black eye Susans. And now we can get into the nooks and crannies on this leaf. Now the thing to know about these plants is Normally, not always, but normally, they will have four leaves and they will drop the oldest one when they produce their new. Now, that leaf with all of the eggs happens to be the oldest leaf on this plant. So rather than me letting there be a chance that those eggs will still hatch and move across the plant, I think it's probably best that I just get rid of this leaf. So I'm going to do that now. So here's what it looks like out of its container and as you can see the root system <laughs> is pretty immense. Sometimes what can happen uh, is the plant will make some corns or bulbs if you like um, and then that's where the new babies sprout from. But this plant it seems to be, if you can see that there, offshoots from the mother plant. Now what you can do is you can make some incisions and chop here at the stem because it will have its own root system as well but I want a big bushy plant so I'm gonna leave everything all together but what I will do is I'm going to probably, in fact, I'm going to just repot it. I'm gonna keep it as it is like this and repot it. So let's get straight into it. So I have another pot here, it's just full of regular compost and I'm just going to dunk it in. There we go, so I've given it another spray down and as you can see it's nice and tucked in and all I'm now going to do is pop it back into the pond okay so it's in the pond I'm just gonna fit it up I've got the stones in again and there you go we've got a super healthy plant once again and look how shiny it is as well Now, just remember the plant absolutely loves full sun. So it's at the front of the balcony where it gets the most sunlight. And in terms of fertilization, I use pond water from the fish pond. And every week when I do a water top up or a water change, I will pour some of the water from the fish pond into that mini pond, and that will help to fertilize the plant. But I'm kind of obsessed that's not the only one that I have up here. <laughs> Come down to the end of the garden with me. Now this little pond is miserable but this plant is gorgeous. Now this is also a black colocasia but it's called a Hawaii, Aloha Hawaiian. Um, but I just love the markings on it. But if we get a closer look, once again spider mites. Now, these two, I think, are the same age, but let me just have a look at the root growth on here. Okay. It's not very happy at all. So this is gonna need a little bit of love, but you know, it has got some good root growth there. So let's take it over to the clinic. We can 
see all of that webbing there underneath from the spider mites. That's how I know that they are definitely spider mites. So again, I'm going to spray this guy and then give it a good wipe with the microfiber cloth. Now I've got a slightly larger container, so I'm going to put the Hawaiian into this new container and let it get a bit more space for those roots. Just look at that root system, so healthy. Let's get that into the new container. Perfect. There you go, and there you have it. Don't forget to get up close and personal with your black colocasias because that is when you're going to find the faults. If you've encountered similar problems with your black colocasia, let me know in the comments below. And also, let me know how your colocasias are doing this year. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope this video was useful. Hopefully, I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out my latest balcony garden tour. In that tour, I show you the damage from the last three heat waves, but as you can see, the garden is still looking great. Anyway, hopefully, I will see you all again soon. Bye!